I wanted to talk about something um, that I was always asking questions about when I was still Jehovah's Witness and I still believed. Now at this time, I think I was a little bit on my way out, um, but I was still, I was definitely still in. Um, when I was 29 years old, I became a ministerial servant. Now I was fully in at this point. Um, I had been trying super hard to become a ministerial servant, and uh, I was able to achieve that. Now, <clears throat> at this time, the congregation I was in was huge. Um, that's all anybody ever talked about, how this particular congregation had grown so much. And uh, we were sitting at probably about 120 publishers. And uh, back then, that was considered a very large congregation. And so, there was talks about doing something about it for years and years. And there's multiple congregations in my town and two kingdom halls. Uh, and so, eventually, they decided to split. And so, there was about 60 publishers uh, in these two congregations that were created. Now, there was already two other congregations in my town. So, now that became four English-speaking congregations and one Spanish and one French. Uh, was a pretty small town, but had a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses. So, a few years later, as you guys may recall, they, uh, the governing body came up with this master plan, right? And, that, and they had a video on it in the midweek meeting. It took up most of the midweek meeting, I re recall. And this master plan was they were in need of Kingdom Halls, right? Um, obviously, we knew we were in need of Kingdom Halls because we had just split. We had four congregations now, uh, two Kingdom Halls. So ours wasn't too bad of a situation, but we had Spanish and French also. We were growing. I always kind of figured, <clears throat> sorry, I've had this weird cold for a long time. But I've, I've always kind of figured that uh, eventually we would get a new Kingdom Hall and have three Kingdom Halls in town because... We had so much uh, going on. So, you might recall this video. There was this master plan where they said that 1,300 Kingdom Halls were needed. And we watched this video, and they talked about the new Kingdom Hall formats and how they're going to be these new uh, up-to-date Kingdom Halls that were going to be very self-efficient, you know, kind of like this green-style Kingdom Halls that would be easy to maintain. Uh, we would learn how to maintain them ourselves, and um, they would be uh, very, very um, publisher-friendly, I guess, in order to uh, repair things and to, to maintenance these buildings. And they showed us what they would look like, and they said there's going to be, you know, 1,300 of these, these bad boys going up, and this is what the new Kingdom Hall was going to look like. Uh, from now on, they're going to build it in this format. So I was actually excited about it at this time. Um, I thought it was a good idea, you know, especially this day and age with the new buildings going green um, in the world. And it, it, I just felt like, you know, it was about time that we, we got on this bandwagon where we could they'd be saving money and, and stuff like that by, uh, by using these sorts of buildings. Well, uh, it just it never happened. And I remember, oh, I don't know, a year or two into it, I remember asking my dad, who's been a long time elder, and just other Jehovah's Witnesses that I've known for a long time, other servants and elders, um, whatever happened with this whole project, you know, this master plan, and, and nobody had an answer for me. And sometimes I'd get like, uh, it seems like people didn't even remember what I was talking about or, or they would just be like I don't even know why you're asking about this you know if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't and I'm thinking this was like a big deal you know the society made a, a big deal out of this master plan why am I basically not even allowed to ask about it anymore <clears throat> and I remember asking my dad about it one time and he finally was like I think they scrapped that I don't think it's gonna happen and I was thinking, you know, if they scrapped it, why didn't they tell us that, you know, or why didn't they, 
why did they scrap it? And it sounded like they had it all figured out in the video. And uh, it's just nobody really wanted to talk about it anymore. So then fast forward to 2018. Now by 2018, I was mentally out. I was, you know, obviously that was only a year ago. So I had been through so much and asked so many unanswered questions that I was gone. And, you know, I was sticking around because I loved my family. I didn't want them to shun me. So, all of a sudden, uh, these mergers are happening. So now, not only do, is there not a need for 1,300 Keenum Halls, now we're getting rid of Keenum Halls. Now, how can that be? I work for a, a really big company. Uh, and I know that if they announced that they were going to build 1,300 more buildings and how much they're they're growing and all this I would have been excited about it you know more money is probably gonna be be made and uh, trickle down to me well if a few years later I heard that that wasn't gonna happen and they're actually selling buildings then there's a problem there I mean that would be an obvious uh, something's going on problem there so the same applies here with Keenum Halls. They did a complete 180 from we're going to build 1,300 new Keenum Halls to actually we don't need as many as, that, as we have. Now when they originally showed this video of the master plan and the 1,300 new Keenum Halls, they were showing areas that were packed full of, of Jehovah's Witnesses, these Keenum Halls that were overpacked. And how these would be the first ones to get these new halls because they needed them. They were overbooked. People were sharing Kingdom Halls and it was just chaos. These areas, a lot of it was in Texas. These areas are going to get the new Kingdom Halls. Well, nobody got any new Kingdom Halls. They scratched that and they sold a bunch of Kingdom Halls. And now they've packed everybody in to these Kingdom Halls. Here in town, we had two Kingdom Halls. One was on a very large piece of property with a huge parking lot that nobody ever used up all the way. And it was kind of out in the country, so you could kind of park on the country road also without any issues if if you had to, which nobody had to because it was a huge Kingdom Hall with a huge parking lot. Well, that's the one they sold. And they moved everybody to the Kingdom Hall that's in the city where the, key, where the parking lot is very small, and now people have to park on the street that's very busy and dangerous. And it's packed. The Kingdom Hall is smaller and it is fire code kind of situation packed. I know churches don't have to follow fire code situations, but if they did, they would be in trouble with as many people that are in there. There's packed people in there. And so how did four congregations that were already big merge into two giant congregations when, like I said, back when I was 29 years old and became a ministerial servant, the whole issue was we're too big, we need to split. That's the only thing that anybody ever talked about. So we did. And then fast forward only three, four years later, now we're merging even more people into a kingdom hall. Way bigger than we were even back then when I became a ministerial servant. Just doesn't make sense to me and rings the bells of there's a financial problem going on very loudly to me. And it just takes everything away that I was always taught about. My whole life as a Jehovah's Witness, I've, I've always been taught that they keep the congregation small so everybody can know each other and the uh, association will be easier because it'll be like a little small family. So they always kept the congregations about 70, 80 publishers. In the big cities, they were a little bit bigger because just of growth at the time. But what they've done now is gone totally against that. And now they're making these, you know, miniature assembly halls pretty much. But they're using the kingdom halls to do it that are not equipped for that amount of people. And it's just a little bit funny to me. Uh, you know, correct me if, if you think I'm wrong, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, but that master plan was back in 2015 that never happened. 
And then the new master plan about how actually we have too many halls and we're going to sell them uh, was just so happened to be about the same time that they had to pay $35 million to this lawsuit that they lost, this sexual abuse lawsuit. Now, you put two and two together. They also had to pay $4,000 a day because they weren't giving up this um, the files and information that the court was telling them to. They just weren't doing it, and the court made them <clears throat> excuse me, pay $4,000 a day until they gave it up, which eventually they did, and that's another story of its own because the <clears throat> local elders in a congregation are encouraged not to ever give that kind of information away, even if it means that they go to jail. Well, they weren't willing to pay $4,000 a day, so they gave it up. Uh, and nobody went to jail. But if it's a local situation, they would have made you stick it out and go to jail. Anyway, uh, so it's pretty obvious to me that they lost a ton of money and that that's why they couldn't build these new kingdom halls. Okay, fine, but why didn't you just tell us that? Now, in the new Shepherding the Flock of God book, um, you can find it online. That's the book that the elders use um, in order to uh, it's the elders handbook now I haven't seen it but I heard that they revised the two witness rule uh, the two witness rule is what kept getting these lawsuits to happen basically if you are a victim of sexual abuse they wouldn't do anything to the uh, assailant unless you had two witnesses to this occurring and so that's why they got getting sued and losing well, the new book, the new elder book, um, has revised that, and now it says to go to the authorities, even if there's one witness or no witnesses, that you can still go to the authorities. They revised that, even though they've come out and said that they will never change the two-witness rule. It's biblical, they'll never change it. Well, they did change it. And the reason is, in my opinion, the almighty dollar. You know? They hung on to that two witness rule. They allowed sexual abuse and allowed sexual abuse because this two witness rule, this two witness rule. And now that they're actually losing money because of it, then the policy changes. So, so the scriptural basis, they say there's scriptural basis to it, goes out the window when they start losing money. So it just seems like it's an organization that would not have the true God's backing with all of this secrecy and all of these abuses being allowed to happen. That just, to me, screams not the true organization. And it's kind of funny because I've always had this saying, um, it's kind of something I just came up with. Like, I mean, I didn't come up with it. I'm sure I heard it somewhere or whatever, but it's kind of how I've lived my life. Um, I've always said if you have to say it, then it's not true. In other words, like if guys go around saying, you know, I can beat up this person or, you know, I can do this, I can do it. Well, if you have to say it, it's obviously not true. Show me. You know, that's kind of my thing. So calling yourself the truth, you know, if you have to say it, you know, if you have to walk around saying we are the truth, you know, prove it to me. But anyway, it's one of the main reasons I left, because of the lack of transparency. Now, if they, I honestly probably would have stayed at least a little bit longer if they had come out and said, you know, we had this plan, we were going to build all these kingdom halls, but come to find out we don't have as much money as we thought we did, and plus there's a couple lawsuits that we lost as far as uh, sexual abuse policies, and... Uh, we sort of regret those things, so we're going to change the, a little bit of the rules because we don't want anybody getting hurt. We don't want sexual abuse going on. So the, the elders have new instruction in their new handbooks. We're not going to tell you all about it because it's the elders' handbook, but just be assured that uh, sexual abuse is going to start being handled better and uh, our finances... Um, We'll, we'll get back into the swing of things. God will help us get back into the swing of things, and then we can start building halls in the future. Had they said that, I would have been perfectly happy with that. You know, they, they saw something they were um, weak on, and they're going to fix it. Perfectly happy with that. 
the company I work for does that. They'll say, hey, look, we were doing this thing and it was stupid. It wasn't working out. We were losing all kinds of money. So we're changing. We're going to start doing this. Okay, cool. Why can't the Jehovah's Witnesses just say that? And instead, you go and you do some research and you find out what's really going on. But their policies say not to do research. If you're researching outside of Jehovah's Witnesses, then you're apostate. So to them, they don't have to be transparent because a good Jehovah's Witness isn't going to go look in anyway. So we'll just tell them what we want to tell them, tickle their ears, and they'll have to deal with it because we've always told them if there's a decision that's going to be made and it doesn't seem uh, like it makes sense to you, do it anyway because the governing body has your best interest at heart. And I used to really believe that when they would say that. Uh, but now I see why they say if something crazy happens or we say something crazy, do it anyway. Well, now I see why because there's crazy things going on behind the scenes. Had I, like I said, had they just flat out said, look, we lost this lawsuit. Uh, you know, the buildings can't be built. We're going to change some policy so we don't lose any more of these lawsuits. That would be transparency, and I would have loved that. I probably would have stayed. But the lack of transparency is what's going to bring down this religion because people are going to research, even though you tell them not to. Some people won't because they're loyal. And I didn't for years and years because of my loyalty. But people are going to people are going to find out. It's, it's becoming too glaringly obvious. But uh, that's just something I wanted to talk about today. Leave me your comments and let me know what you think.